Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests and panelists, fellows and students of Tembusu College. Welcome to our signature event at Tembusu, the Tembusu Forum. The forum is convened twice a semester, and this one is a landmark because it's the eighth such forum, which means that we've been operating as a college and doing this for two years. And this event, in fact, rounds off our second full year in operation as a college, and in some sense is a culmination of what we've been doing all semester. This is still, the Tembusu Forum, the only gathering of its type that I know of in Singapore that brings together the country's leading intellectuals, policymakers, and as of tonight, filmmakers, to together to discuss controversial and topical issues in front of a predominantly undergraduate audience, the students of Tembusu College. Now, we've never shied away from controversy in this series. So far, over eight forums in two years, we've tried to solve the Middle East crisis. We've tried to bring China and the United States closer together. We elected Barack Obama as President of the United States before the American public did. Um, we've tried to solve the health care problems in Singapore. Tonight we're going to take on censorship and see how far we can get with it. And we're already striking a blow for free speech just by talking about it, I suppose, here tonight. Okay. This forum is also the most public of many contributions to the life of the college by our esteemed rector, Professor Tommy Coe. And it's always with pleasure that I call him to the podium to convene the Tembusa Forum, Prof. Co. Thank, thank you very much, Greg. Um, welcome, welcome, warm welcome to the Tembusu Forum. Um, as my wife is here, I will follow her good advice and make only three points. Yeah. Uh, first, I want to observe that racial harmony and religious harmony are two of Singapore's most important achievements and two of our precious national assets. It is because of our racial harmony and religious harmony that multiculturalism thrives in Singapore. I think I speak for all Singaporeans when I say that we would like to continue to maintain um, racial and religious harmony in Singapore. There will be times when we will have to make a difficult choice um, between, for example, religious harmony and uh, our attachment to freedom of speech. Um, let me give you a specific example from my own experience. In 1992, um, I was unexpectedly asked to chair the Censorship Review Committee. And one of the questions that the government posed to us is whether we should um, ban Salman Rushdie's book, Satanic Verses. <clears throat> as, a, as a liberal and as a lover of books, my instinct is not to ban any books, including satanic verses. But we were, we were faced with the unanimous appeal, the unanimous appeal of the leaders of our Malay and Muslim community to ban the book. And they pointed out to us the horrific consequences of the publication of this book in many Muslim countries, and even non-Muslim countries, which resulted in riots, mayhem, and innocent lives being lost. So in, in the face of this unanimous appeal, my committee and I reluctantly advised the Singapore government to ban satanic verses. And, and I'm sorry that the book um, remained banned in Singapore today. I believe strongly in artistic freedom, and I think Singapore's 
cultural development would be impeded if we do not empower our artists to think, to imagine, and to create freely. At the same time, we don't want artistic freedom to undermine our treasured racial or religious harmony. So I guess the question tonight is, should a film like Pond Masala be allowed to be screened in Singapore? Or should it be restricted in some one way or another because it might offend the Indian community and thereby jeopardize our racial harmony? That, that is the question for discussion this evening. Um, the second point I want to make is that in Singapore, the media, the, the media Development Authority of, of Singapore, MDA, imposes classifications on film. And there are, f films are classified into five categories. At the lowest level, um, films are given the G or general classification. That means it can be viewed by anyone. The next classification is um, PG, which is parental guidance. And, and the movie can be seen by anyone of any age, but parents are advised to, advi to request to advise their children whether or not they should see the film. Then the third classification is um, NC-16. NC-16. NC-16 are films that can only be seen by youth above the age of 16. Then the fourth classification is um, M18. M18 is a classification which entitles only people above the age of 18 to see the film. And finally, there's R21. R21, it was at one time R, and then it became RA, and now it's R, right? I'm responsible for RA. Yeah? But, yeah, and, and I'll tell you the story, because in 1992, there was, a, there was a backlash by the public against R movies. And, and many, many people in Singapore demanded that this category R be abolished. So I was asked for my advice, and I felt that it would be a shame if we were to abolish the R category. So I tried to suggest a compromise that the R category um, be uh, that films are eligible for the R category if it has redeeming artistic value. So the R category became an RA category. And so it survived. And the other thing I had to do, which, which resulted in my being uh, beaten up by all the movie exhibitors, <laughs> was to persuade them not to show RA movies in the heartland, but in, only in the city. And, and they were very angry with me because they said, you know, they, they, they get a, a lot more revenue from movie theaters in the heartland. And Singapore being so small that it was irrational to al allow RA movies to be shown in town and not in the heartland. So I agreed that it was irrational, but you got to take into account people's emotions and feelings. So I managed to save the R category by reinventing it as the RA category. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so we have five categories in Singapore. Remember the five categories. Now, let me give you a brief chronology of the firm Pond Masala. Um, Pond Masala is one of three short films. The other two being called Cartoons and The Bouncer. And the three short films are shown together under the provocative title, Sex, Violence, Family values. Um, the film was um, given the rating M18. And I, re I remember, Ken, that the premiere was on the 5th of October last year. On the 5th of October last year. But as a result of some complaints received by MDA from the public, MDA requested the advice of the film consultative panel, which consists of 24 citizens of good standing. One of the members of this 